coming up on today's show. Um, they have very strong emotional attachments to their things. Mm -hmm. And particularly um, if someone has experienced grief or loss. Are things that your clients have been struggling with in the last uh, year. So these are all current kinds of things. So how would someone deal, deal with that? There's a time to also hone it in on just one thing, mm -hmm. you know, and then and pull yourself back. Five challenges to organizing and how to overcome them. Part two today on Keeping You Organized. Well, hello and welcome to Keeping You Organized. Today, we are going to continue a discussion we started last time on Keeping You Organized, which was the five challenges uh, to organizing or five challenges to overcome and how to uh, adapt your organizing skills, I guess, to overcome those challenges. And we'll be bringing back Linda Samuels from Oh So Organized. Linda, welcome back to Keeping You Organized. Hey, John. So great to be here. Well, listen, we, we started last episode and we only got through two of the five. We talked about uh, transitions and uh, how people deal with that and the stress, but how to use organizing techniques to overcome that. And then we also talked about paper, you know, a perennial favorite here, uh, at least from our point of view at Smead. But uh, and and some of the great techniques that you can use to just these are really timeless principles. So I'm going to encourage people to go back uh, if they did not uh, watch or listen to the last episode and pick up on those those first two of the five. But we got three more to cover here, Linda. So um, let's move into number three. What do you think? Okay, I'm going to talk fast. Well, no, you don't have to talk too fast because, uh, you know, we have a lot to cover, but we'll be able to do it. Okay. So the third organizing challenge that um, is something that I encounter frequently with clients um, are emotions. Mm. And so, you know, I'm not talking about organizing emotions, but I'm talking about the kind of challenge that comes up when you are organizing. Mm -hmm. And particularly with the demographic of clients that I work with, which tend to be those really struggling with the organizing piece, mm -hmm. um, they have very strong emotional attachments to their things. Mm -hmm. And particularly um, if someone has experienced grief or loss, then that attachment can be even stronger, making it hard to let go. So I have some strategies about how one would work with um, emotions if that's coming up during an organizing session. Oh yeah, and I'm sure you deal with this. Again, these tips, of, of, we talked about this in the lapis, last episode, are, are things that your clients have been struggling with in the last uh, year. So these are all current kinds of things. So how Absolutely. would someone deal, deal with that? So one of the things is that um, when emotions come up, you just want to acknowledge that they're there. You're not trying to push them away. You're not trying to discount them. Let them let them surface because um, that's very much an important part of organizing if it's an emotional experience. Mm -hmm. It's just part of what it is. So just accept it for that. Um, one thing I have noticed is there's a term called kinesthetic sympathy. I don't know if that's familiar to you or not. Well, kinesthetic, the word is, but uh, I'm not sure what the sympathy is, but I think you're going to help us explain that big word. Yeah, exactly. So what kinesthetic kinesthetic sympathy is means that when someone touches an object they feel even more attached to it mm. so when i'm working with a client who's feeling very emotional about the kinds of things that we're working on the objects that we're touching and trying to decide about i will experiment with instead of them holding it i will hold it for them if if they allow it if that's okay with them mm -hmm. and what happens is it creates a little distance between them and the object so they can be a little more objective about it. Because once they hold it, not only can the emotions flood up even more, you know, tears, crying, all that, sobbing, mm -hmm. but it can make them feel more um, attached to it and that much harder to let go of something. So it's something to be aware of. Hmm. Yeah. Um, another one is that when someone is trying to let go of something, but they're emotionally attached, if you can help them with something that I call, I didn't come up with the term, but it's called safe passage, hmm. where you help them to find a way that they're comfortable with letting it go. So that would mean donating it to um, an organization that they feel really good mm. about. Yeah, for, that's a great tip. 
yep, or giving it to a person that they know would appreciate it, then they can let go of it knowing that it will safely travel and be with someone that will appreciate it and benefit from it. So that's another one. Right. Yeah, a lot of people like to know the future of their stuff. Yes. Even though it's leaving them, they want to make sure it's secure and it's got a good home. Kind of like finding a, a new home for your pet or something if you have to get rid of it. You just you want to make sure this place has a good home. There was a book that I came across a bunch of years ago where there, this guy decided he was going to sell all of his stuff, mm. every single thing. And so he, I think he went on eBay and sold everything, you know, from like uh, tissues to books to everything. <laughs> And then he went around the country and and went and visited his stuff. Oh. <laughs> and the book is about where his stuff ended up. Wow. And who had I know it was sort of fascinating. So yeah, <laughs> we like to know that our that our things have have arrived at someone else's is is able to use them. Wow. So um, that's that's one more strategy. Another one is is that again when you're wor it, working when you're organizing and their emotions are bubbling up. And, you know, people are starting to really feel it in their bodies. You could see tears, you, you know, you, their whole countenance could change. You want to also encourage them to take a break. Just mm -hmm. get up for a little bit. You're not ignoring the emotions, but you're just taking a break from what they are. Just for that moment, maybe get a glass of water, have a small snack, get some fresh air. Just, it's okay to take a break. You don't have to just keep forging through. Right. Um, and I think that that's also something to be aware of, both if you're if you're experiencing it, experiencing it, or if you're an organizer experiencing that with a, a client, encourage them to take that break. Great, great. So, All right. Well, talking about breaks, I think we're going to take a quick one right now, and when we come back, we got to get those last two in before the end of this program. So, uh, uh, we we are with Linda Samuels, also organized, talking about the five challenges to organizing and how to overcome them, and we'll be right back. Now, there's a place just for you. Life can be busy, and you still have to keep it all together. That's why you like to be organized and in control. Introducing MyOrganize.life, a special place where you can get ideas and solutions to organize what's important to you, your important papers, your important decisions, your important life events. We show you the ideas and products to stay organized in your life. See what's new. Stop by and say hello. Visit us at any time at www.myorganize.life. It's just for you. MyOrganize.life by Smead. Find us at www.myorganize.life. MyOrganize.life. We're back now on Keeping You Organized, talking about the five challenges to overcome and uh, or that the big organizing challenges that a lot of people have. We're with Linda Samuels, oh so organized. And Linda has talked to her clients and looked at them for the past year and kind of come up with those five big ones that happen to a lot of us here, let's just say. I mean, we probably can relate to every single one, Linda. But um, uh, so can we get into number four? Or do you still have anything left you want to hit on uh, the emotions one? Um, the last thing on the emotions, I would just say that if you are going to um, organize and you think that it's going to be emotional, enlist the help of a supportive and non-judgmental friend or family member or professional. Mm -hmm. So those are the keys. You don't have to do it alone. Okay, so, great. So, okay. All right, number four. Number four. <laughs> um, number four is maintenance. Hmm. So the interesting thing with organizing is that very often people are under the impression that you get organized once and you're good. You're good to go. That's it. I'm done. I'm done. But, but interestingly enough, organizing also requires maintenance. And that's a, a, a generally an overlooked part of the organizing process. Mm -hmm. So so think about laundry, right? We do our laundry. We get it all folded, put away. And guess what? We have to do it again because our clothes get dirty. Every so, week. It's amazing. Every week. Every week. <laughs> Um, I actually like doing laundry, but I know a lot of people hate doing laundry, yeah. but, but even so, I also like organizing yeah. a lot of people don't like organizing. So maybe, maybe there's some relationship there, yeah. but the idea is that like laundry that needs to be done regularly, organizing is like that too. It's not that you have to reset up your systems all the time, but you do need to maintain them so that they'll keep working. Okay. So great. I have a couple strategies for that. Um, the first one, pretty simple. 
build in some maintenance time and you decide what's what makes sense for you. Um, but on a daily basis, you know, the idea of bringing things back to what I like to call square one. Yes. Make your bed, pick up the dirty laundry and put it in the hamper. Mm -hmm. Put your dishes away after you've eaten. Go through your mail on a regular basis. Those are parts of organizing systems that have been set up. But if you don't do the actions to go with them, mm -hmm. then, you know, things are going to fall apart pretty quickly. Yeah. So that's, that's one idea. Um, the other thing is that on a daily basis, you may notice that there are piles that collect in odd places. They could be clothes, they could be papers, they could be toys, whatever they are. So again, on a daily basis or as frequently as you're comfortable with, try to get those back to their homes mm -hmm. where they came from. Um, then weekly or monthly, you might want to think about doing a little higher level of maintenance. So you might need to purge a closet that somehow started to overflow again, maybe made a few too many purchases and didn't let go of some things. Mm -hmm. Or the drawers are starting to be full, so now you can't really easily put that laundry away. Or um, the papers are starting to pile up. So that, again, that doesn't have to be daily, but maybe weekly or monthly you want to do stuff like that. Right. Well, I think it's really important to have that built in. I mean, again, we do tasks around our house every day as part of a bigger system. I think you really, really nailed it on that one there. And, you know, what would happen if you didn't, you know, do all the dishes? The next time you had a meal, uh, your system breaks down and you have dirty dishes. And so, yeah, I right. think that's great. All right. Are we ready to move on to number five? We are. Awesome. Um, okay. So number five, this one is a little different. So this one... Um, I'm calling it the mindfulness hmm. um, issue, which is, you might think, well, how does that relate to organizing challenge? So what I've noticed here is that um, my clients, and not just my clients, all of us, we get distracted. We get distracted so easily, and it pulls our focus from what we're doing. So um, it makes, if you're trying to get organized, if you're constantly being distracted by intrusions of sounds and people and ideas and things pulling off ta task, then that or getting organized is that much harder because you're, you're being pulled from what you're trying to do constantly. So um, another thing as far as the mindfulness piece is that aside from distractions, um, when people are trying to get organized, instead of focusing on that, they're often wishing that they'd be doing something else. Mm -hmm. So they're not really focused on that, but their mind is elsewhere thinking, oh, I really don't want to be organizing. I'd rather be, you know, playing outside or taking a walk or whatever. So that's another part of the mindfulness piece. Yeah. Um, they also, I've noticed that instead of focusing on what we're doing on the organizing at hand, they're thinking about the past, what happened yesterday or months ago, or they're thinking about the future, what they have to do tomorrow, and they're not really being present with currently what they're doing, trying to organize right then and there. They're trying to do many things at once rather than one thing. So multitasking versus single tasking. Yeah. So that's the context with which I'm talking about mindfulness and how that challenge shows up with clients and with others when we're trying to organize or in our life in general. So I, 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 I can't wait to find out how we deal with this. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Coming from a multitasker, or, uh, I guess I was a dreamer. So, you know, I'm thinking about 10 things, you know, at one time, but. And, and you know what, that's not, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, the mind wanders, the mind does mm -hmm. think of many things, but there's a time to also hone it in on just one thing, mm -hmm. you know, and then, and pull yourself back. So, um, so what I propose is that you introduce the idea of mindfulness, even the word mindfulness, even setting the stage of thinking about organizing mindfully right into the process. Um, part of that also involves, part of that mindfulness piece involves not beating yourself up for what you didn't do. Mm -hmm. you're, you're here now. You're here now to work. You're here now to organize. Don't judge yourself. Be compassionate start there. Right. Oh, that's great advice. Um, another thing is the idea of what I like to call full circle thinking. And again, introducing the mindfulness piece to that. So it means something like if you open a drawer, 
close it, complete the circle. Yeah. Um, if you fold your laundry, put it away, right? Again, completing that circle. If you unlock the door to the house, put the keys back in their designated spot. That, that, that's great. I, I don't think I've ever heard that concept uh, described like that before, but I think that's really good. And, and, and almost they're almost like cues to each other as well, right? That's right. So in other words, it's kind of like, um, you know, uh, I don't know. It is, I, I do, I'm thinking of it as a circle because yeah. there's, there's different points along it, but until you get back to the front, you know, you want to just complete that task. Yeah. And that involves really thinking about each step when you're doing it. And you think so, about a circle is like a loop, and you know they call it open loop. You don't want any open loops, right? You just want an open loop. You want to complete the process yeah. so that you're being very aware of what you're doing. And again, that'll help overall in the organizing process. Yeah. Now, here's another piece that's interesting about it. If you are being mindful about what you're doing, so for example, you are um, opening a drawer and you're trying to close it, and you're not able to close it because you've got too much stuff in there, then you can also use the mindfulness piece as a clue to say, hey, I think I might need to address this organizing issue mm -hmm. and take out the stuff in the drawer, look at what's there and see what can go. You know, So you can also use the mindfulness piece to in for what might need further attention. Right, that's great. Yeah. All right, uh, so, so have we covered all five? Do you feel good about that? We have covered all five that is amazing now we need to cover uh and talk a little bit about oh so organized and how people can get a hold of you because we're just about ready to wrap this up okay well thanks john well um people can reach me by going to my website osoorganized.com oh or my book blog website the other side of organized.com and all my contact information is there and i encourage you to stop by i have a free e-newsletter there's a lot of different conversations going on, and I'd love to have you come join me. Great. Well, Linda, this has been a great two-part podcast. And again, for people who have not heard the first two tips, we did them in part one. Make sure you check out the show notes and, and get the whole entirety of these five because they are they are great pieces of, uh, of training and I think really helps you not be so overwhelmed. That's really my big takeaway here. If you can kind of address the challenge and not be overwhelmed and use some of these tactical things you, you'll do well so well, thank you john thank you so much for for inviting me back it's always a pleasure speaking with oh. you you're great. <laughs> well you're going to be back again too so well there you have it folks we're going to let you go now and uh, uh, we will see you on the next edition of keeping you organized